Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. This is a video series here where we're talking about completing the square. We're solving quadratic equations by completing the square. It's a special technique that I'm talking about right now. And a quick review here is we want to be able to write things in an equation in this format, in a squared binomial. All right, because there's things we can do. In other words, take a square root to solve an equation and the next step. So sometimes we have to add an extra term, and that's called completing the square. Now the rule is, you look at the middle term here, and you take half of it, and then you square it. Okay, it's a half squared rule. All right, that's as simple as it can be. So in order to know what number to add, you have to half and square the middle term. So I want to remind you that there's a little trick to it. If you're going to complete the square by adding a proper term there, for example, a positive 4, then you also have to add a negative 4 on the same side of the equal sign. All right? Now, if you're going to do it on both sides of the equal sign, then what you have to do is make sure they are the same sign. All right? Opposite signs on the same side of the equal sign, same signs on opposite sides of the equal sign. Okay? Now, this just kind of takes practice back and forth. So I'm going to give you two problems in this problem set, and I want to have you try them. All right, let's focus in on number seven. We're going to solve that by completing the square. All right, you hit pause on this video, and you give it a try, according to what I showed in the previous video, and we'll see if you're right, and I'll work it out for you. Go ahead. All right, the first thing I need to do is I need to get the n squared and the n term on the same side, usually on the left. So I'm going to add 8n to each side so that it looks like this on the left, and I have a negative 4 on the right. Okay, now I need to complete the square by putting a number right there. So half of the 8 is 4, but now I need to square it, and so I need to add a 16 to make that a perfect square trinomial. But on the other side, I also add 16. Make sure you do it balanced. Same number on both sides of the equal sign. So I need to be able to factor this as a squared binomial. And so it would have to be a 4. n plus 4 quantity squared equals 12. Take the square root of each side. That leaves me with n plus 4 equals the positive and the negative square root of 12. Okay, now to make it a little bit better, let's simplify that radical. All right, now I know that 12 is 4 times 3, and I can take the square root of 4, and that becomes a 2 on the outside. So it's really 2 radical 3 plus or minus. Now, if that went way too fast for you, I do have a video on simplifying radicals, and I don't want to take the time to do that here, but look for that in my um, video channel, simplifying radicals. So n plus 4 equals plus and minus 2 radical 3. I have to subtract 4 from each side. And the final result will be this. Notice how two answers are possible. Minus 4 plus 2 radical 3 and minus 4 minus 2 radical 3. All right, now hopefully you've tried number 8. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to um, leave a space in there and we're going to have a perfect square trinomial. So n squared minus 18n. The half of 18 is 9, but we have to square it. So we're going to add 81 there, and we're going to have our negative 77 and add 81 there. So I have to add equal things. Now minus 77 plus 81 is 4, 
And then of course I have to take the square root of each side. And remember the square root of 4 is not just a positive 2, it could also be a negative 2. Final step is to add 9 to get n by itself. And so n can be 2 and 9, which is 11, or negative 2 and 9, which is 7. All right, final answer, 11 and 7, two answers possible. All right, well, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope these two problems were um, understandable. If not, you can uh, write a comment. And But if you like this video, share it with others. And thanks for watching. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.